Now, whenever an honour killing, what, what a misnomer, but whenever an honour killing takes place, whenever a woman is killed by a father, brother, cousin, or even, even a mother in the name of religion or culture, we're told by white liberals that it has nothing to do with faith. Really? You know, the, the denial is, is just sickening, frankly. Author Rahil Raza is a leading Islamic moderate campaigner for women's rights, and thank God she's, she's in this country and working as hard as she does. Welcome to you, as always. Thank you. Thank you, um, Michael. Now, just recently in the UK, uh, it was an old case, but they found this poor girl's body, and, and she'd been murdered, and her mother was involved, and she just wanted to be like most other, better than most other girls. There's a decline of culture there. She simply wanted to maybe have some fun, not do anything bad, and, and they killed her. This is not that common, but it goes on, doesn't it? Oh, absolutely. And unfortunately, in some parts of the world, it's on the increase. Really? Uh, yes. Where, where would that to, be? In, in Pakistan and mm. in Jordan, uh, according to UN reports, in Pakistan, there were 4,000 cases of honor killings. And, uh, and they are honor killings. It's unfortunate, Michael, that we get so caught up in the semantics of the word. You know, yeah. shall we call it an honor killing or not call it an honor killing? But the understanding is that it is done in the name of honor. So it's not that we're calling the act uh, an, an act of honor, but yeah. it, it is very dishonorable, but it is done because of the honor. You and put that very well. Family is involved. It's not just an individual acting alone, as in the case of Aksa Parvez. Mm. Uh, saddest part is that the mother invited her home, thinking that the father was just going to break her legs. But for a mother, just break her, just legs. Break her legs. And she's quoted as saying this. So um, it's, it's a very sad reflection on the situation of women when we don't stand up and speak out for killing uh, in the name of honor. Well, pe people really don't. You mentioned two countries there. I mean, yes. I, I do know Jordan fairly well. That amazes me because Jordan has always been one of the more open Islamic societies. Christians up to now have not been badly treated there. It's been a more moderate government. Well, I mean, let me read you what Article 340 of the Penal Code in Jordan states. It says, and I quote, he who discovers his wife of one or one of his female relatives committing adultery and kills, wounds, or injures one of them is exempted from any penalty. So this is what is embedded in the Penal Code. In Pakistan, we have something called the Hudud Ordinance. And this was implemented by one of our presidents, General Ziaul Haq, who yeah. was very enchanted with the whole Wahhabi ideology. And so keep it, making women second and third class citizens didn't matter. Even in cases of rape, the women are the ones who are imprisoned. Mm, yes. And there are more women in prisons than there are men, and some of them prefer to be in prison because it, uh, you know, it helps them escape this mm. idea of honor killing. Because if a woman is raped, the honor of the family is lost. So some male relative takes it, takes it upon himself to revenge the honor of the family by just killing the girl. There was a, the, a story of a man who actually killed four of his daughters because one of them had dishonored the family, and he thought that the other three should also just go along uh, with it and be killed. This is beyond comprehension. Look, I, I, unlike other stations, we, we, do, we, we name names here. Yes. But let's also be informed and reasonable. It's not exclusive to Islam. We have seen this in Sikh culture to a degree in Hindu culture, but nothing like to the same extent. It seems to occur again and again in Islamic countries. You mentioned Pakistan and Jordan, for example. Yes. Um, most of the cases in this country have been with Islamic diaspora families. Is this implicit within Islam or is it a perversion of the religion? It is absolutely a perversion of the religion. There is nothing in the Quran that speaks about this issue of honor killings. But as you know, the radicals and the extremists have always uh, you know, misinterpreted and used it to their advantage. It is a way of power and control over women. But I'll tell you the extent to how this is a problem in Muslim countries. And, and I want to be very clear that this mm. is not in the Quran, because the Quran says killing one human being is like killing all of humanity. Now, we look at more than 50% of the humanity of the Muslim world, where 50% of them, the women, are treated as second and third class citizens. Just yesterday, there was a news piece that in Saudi Arabia, a woman was told to have 10 lashes because she chose to drive. Yeah, didn't, didn't, oh, didn't my the, God. The king maybe let her off. He, he the was, king let he her was being off. very gracious. But yeah. this is the same king who said that women could vote in 2015. And uh, so, so it, it's just a pathology an ideology that considers women second-class citizens. But, if... but when the king of Saudi Arabia said in a few years' time you can have the vote for, frankly, meaningless elections, uh, Twitter went 
crazy yes. with people with Muslim women saying stop this Western fantasy you should be privileged to live in Saudi Arabia huge numbers of Muslim women saying we love this place well this is what's so sad about it I mean here is a country a, an ideology that has usurped women's rights and all of a sudden they're giving them this little carrot to dangle at the hand, uh, end of a stick I mean freedom and equality are our God-given rights and Islam gave us more rights in the sense of you know inheritance and equality in the mosque but these Wahhabis usurp those rights and now they're handing them back one by one so women are going to be allowed to vote and how are they going to get there they're going to drive there they're not allowed to drive so the next day he orders 10 lashes and then forgives so this is a man who considers himself divinely ordained to suppress women but coming back to the issue of honor killings Michael last year I went to Geneva to the United Nations Human Rights Commission and I want to tell you what happened there. I went there with a group, which is an ethical humanist union, to table a petition in the United Nations to make honor killings an international criminal offense, mm -hmm. which it isn't in large part of the Muslim world. Well, the OIC, which is the Organization of Islamic Countries, they stop or block anything that has the word Islam or Muslim and that's what, in it. that's 57 countries? Majority. Yeah. And more, all male. They block any petition that has the word Muslim or Islam in it. So we worded it in such a way to say that this is not exclusive to Islam and it is not a part of Islam. But here is where the problem is that according to the law of Qisas in Sharia, which is man-made, a family member can forgive another family member and then there is no penalty on them. So for example, if a father or if a brother or a son commits an honor killing, the father can forgive them and therefore they're not put up to trial. So the, the tragedy in this is, of course, double. One, that the, the crime is being committed, but the worst tragedy is that the perpetrators of this crime are not taken to court. They're given forgiveness and under the so-called Islamic law in some countries. So obviously, it has some connotations in the Muslim faith, and sooner or later, Muslims have to wake up and realize that killing women is not part of the faith. Well, inshallah. Uh... Thank you so very much indeed. My pleasure.